Hello everyone, today I'll be reviewing Parts of Glory. Parts of Glory came out in 1957 and was directed by Stanley Kubrick and it stars Kirk Douglas as you can probably tell from the cover behind me. So this is a World War I film, it's set in the year 1916 and it is from the French army's point of view as they go forward to attack the German forces. And in this film we have Kirk Douglas, his, his main character, he plays a character called Colonel Dax who is in charge of the army um, and helping them push forward. Um, what ends up happening is that they reach this point where they are trying to take over this area known as the Ant Hill. But unfortunately um, all the French troops they're really struggling because there's so much gunfire going on up ahead of them that they don't want to push forward. And we have this other character who is the Brigadier General and is played by George McCready and he really wants everybody to push forward no matter what and he really wants the French to claim the Ant Hill territory from the Germans but he's prepared to do anything necessary in order to get this in order to take over this area so he actually orders some of the other troops to actually fire um, at their own men at their own French forces and is prepared to you know risk the lives of lots of other French men just in order to take over this territory and there's even a scene where the Brigadier General is explaining to Colonel Dax that you know 25% of men will be killed here um, another 10% will be killed at this point and he's just sort of going through explaining how yes men will die lots of men will die but we have to risk their lives we have to kill them in order to actually um, move forward and claim this anthill territory and Kirk Douglas's character Colonel Dax um, he is sort of caught in the middle because he's the colonel he's obviously um, he has to listen to the general but he's also in charge of lots of the other troops and he essentially doesn't agree with what the general is saying but at the same time he has to do it he has to push forward and there's a real conflict there between the colonel and the general when i was watching this film this was the first time that i had ever seen it and and, and as i've said in some of my other reviews stanley kubrick is one of my favorite film directors of all time and this is actually one of his earlier films i think this is the earliest stanley kubrick film i've seen and it's not like a lot of his other films because a lot of his other films they can be a bit lengthy um, but this one is actually fairly short it's only 88 minutes long so it's a pretty short film but it's nice in a way because it doesn't waste any time um, in this film it's very to the point and everything makes sense in this film there's everything on screen it always is essential to the plot and the the plot itself is really captivating it's a really um, deep film very emotional film and actually, in a lot of Stanley Kubrick's later films, his characters are quite cold and emotionless. But this film is all about the emotion. It's all about the humanity of war, or the inhumanity of war, rather. We get George McCready play the Brigadier General in a very menacing role, a very villainous role, who almost doesn't care about any of these men that are being sent to war. They're just numbers to him. He just he expects them to die, but if, if they all die, if some of them can survive and can take the anthill that's the only thing that matters to him Kirk Douglas in this film he's absolutely brilliant I've seen Douglas in a couple of other films before and he's always been a very good actor but this film his performance in this is his best I've ever seen I also have to say that the um the cinematography is excellent it's it's filmed in black and white but it's a very excellent looking film it's very beautiful looking even though it's a war film and although this is a war film really we only get a fairly small section of the film which actually takes place in battle when these troops are you know trying to take over the anthill and um, scenes in the trenches because there is also another scene which is set in a courtroom which is really about how these men were arrested um, or sent to trial by the brigadier general because they didn't want to push forward because there was so much gunfire going on and some of these men are actually sentenced to be um, what well, well they were on trial to be um, put to death for not going forward with the invasion because they didn't feel like they could camera work in this film is also really excellent we get some action shots if you've seen any other Stanley Kubrick film you'll know exactly what I mean but there's these scenes in the trenches where we as the audience were looking through the trench with these men on either side and the camera's just moving forward slowly 
then it focuses back onto Kirk Douglas as he's walking through and you can see the sheer terror and expressions on everybody's faces in this scene and there's lots of scenes like this where we can see the emotion and the feelings on his characters faces and what these men are going through now although this is actually from the french uh, point of view um it's obviously the french against the germans we don't actually see any of the german forces in this film except we only see one german character in the whole film which is actually a woman who is right at the end of the film which has to sing in front of all the French troops and this is a very powerful scene because well you have to watch the scene to find out but basically what happens is that the whole atmosphere in the room is turned upside down by this woman singing and it's an incredible scene you really have to watch to get an understanding of what I mean but actually the woman in that scene she actually later went on to marry Stanley Kubrick as well so overall having watched this film I think it's a very powerful film very emotional um, not a film which is like a lot of other Stanley Kubrick films, to be honest. I suppose earlier in Kubrick's career, he was more focused on these type of films and obviously keeping his films quite short as well. I'd like to say this is one of Stanley Kubrick's best films, but to be honest, I think all of Kubrick's films I've seen are amazing. So it's quite difficult for me to say. It's probably not my favourite Kubrick film. I do enjoy 2001, The Shining, um, Full Metal Jacket. There's loads of great films he's done nevertheless this is still an amazing film and definitely one of the best films of this era and certainly Kirk Douglas is absolutely excellent and yeah it's a travesty that this film wasn't even nominated for a single Academy Award which I don't understand why perhaps because of the controversial element of it in fact this this film was actually banned in France for quite a while because it was seen as propaganda however Overall, this is an excellent film, so I'm going to give it a rating of 9 out of 10. I would thoroughly recommend it. It's a very powerful, emotional film, so if you like those sorts of films, you will definitely appreciate Paths of Glory. So there we go. So that is my review of Paths of Glory. So what do you guys think? Have you seen Paths of Glory? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Please let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.